Um, hi, so I'm Felicity Crotty, I'm the soil scientist at the Allerton Project um, and so I'm the one who puts the science behind all of the research we do into soils, uh, which can be quite interesting. And this is uh, Professor Jane Rickson, who is based at Cranfield University. Hello. She's also one of the, our trustees, so hence why we're together on the soil pit. Stand. <laughs> pit is going a little, well, it's a lovely little pit. Um, so anyway, so this is our long-term no-till field. So it's not been ploughed in the last 12 years, I think, although it's been officially no-till for the last seven. And I've got here a bit of a display going on with different um, different soil structures between this field and some other ones. So here we've got um, soil that is basically from the soil pit. And you can just see how nicely it breaks up. The crumb of, and texture of the soil is, is really good. And you can see the earthworm channels. You can see all the way through that one, for example. Um, just how nicely it breaks up and how easy it is for plants to grow through this. And then you've got this one, which, um, so your first stop was the bio bed and next to the bio bed was a spring oat field. Um, so this is from there. And what you can see here is me showing my inability to, oh, crushing my um, to actually pull this apart. So you can just see there's a, there's a huge difference. And this has actually been no-till for the last three years. So it's still, so it's getting there is what I'm saying. So just the, the progression basically. But it still has lots of earthworms living in it. You can see that there's burrows here. There's, um, you can, uh, the tiny bit I managed to pull apart, it does have burrows going on. It still breaks up to a certain extent, but it's a lot tighter. It's a lot harder to actually move around through the soil. So the earthworms we find in that obviously have, have more difficulty to move around um, in comparison to this one. We actually um, we found about 15 to 20 worms today from digging that soil pit. So there's a lot of activity actually going on within our no-till field. Um, although to be, to be fair to this one, um, over the spring, so autumn to spring period, I did actually count the number of earthworms. There was about 700 per meter square, which is loads. So it was a pr reasonably good soil actually, until it got, well, it's a bit unfair because I took the soil, soil samples yesterday. So obviously a lot drier than today's ones. And then this is from the field over there, which is permanent pasture, which you'll be visiting in a minute for the, for the next stop. So you can see just the, the root penetration and just how much um, organic matter there is within this profile as well. Again, quite dry because I took it yesterday when it hadn't rained. Okay, so we set this up um, a couple of months ago now. It wasn't actually, in, um, the idea was going to be this sort of runoff experiment and looking at leaching and that sort of thing. But actually it's turned into a really great demonstration of just what happens if you leave a soil fallow in comparison to different crops. So in, this, in the foreground we've got um, a cover crop. So we've got radish, phacelia and buckwheat there, which has been growing up, as I say, for two months. And then we've got um, a grass clover lay, and then we've got a spring barley. And then we've got the bare fallow. So I put these out yesterday and so basically these signify just the, the amount of rainfall we've had um, over the last 12 hours say because it's not rained that much. Um, when you leave the soil bare in comparison to a crop and what you can actually you know you can see there's a large amount of water logging in the fallow treatment in comparison to all three of the other crop treatments and just the level if you did this over autumn winter time so you were going to have a spring crop and you've left the ground bare instead of putting a cover crop in this is the likelihood of what's going to happen. You've got a greater risk of soil erosion, of flooding, of losing, of leaching of nutrients that you've been trying to build up in your soil. Um, and you've also got this large risk of compaction. So when you actually move down and start pressing the soil, you can actually see the water squidging up. And I'm doing, you know, the pressing of this down. If you went over this on in machinery, you would completely ruin the structure of your soil. And it takes, you know, it just takes one pass of the machine at a wrong time to ruin your soil and then it takes years almost to actually make it better again. And when can, you I just, can I just say that this again is why drainage is so important, getting that structure right is so important. Because if you can just drain, make that soil just that little bit drier, it means it extends your workability window. When you can get onto that soil as quickly as you can without causing that compaction danger uh, or risk. And again, just as Felicity said, getting rid of it, putting it in is very easy, instantaneous. Getting it out, getting that compaction out is, is a nightmare, it's very, very challenging. Which again is where cover crops may come yeah. in. And when you actually compare the, the water, you know, how much water is actually in the cover crops, these are still pretty dry, actually. There's the level of, of, of moisture content in the soil here. It's not, it's not huge. Um, so, so just that level of rainfall, you can see the difference is happening. And the same with the grass lay. I mean, you can see there's actually, we've got some quite large soil cracks from the dry weather that's happened. And I mean, the surface is quite moist, but actually 
you know, if we go all the way to the bottom, it probably isn't. And that is just the amount of water the plants take up, utilising um, the rainfall that we've had and actively growing. And the same for the spring barley, which is actually doing reasonably well as well. We'd, it was, we'd struggled with establishment in these boxes. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's sort of, that's, it's a great example of just what happens if you leave the ground bare over winter and what could, you know, what, you're, what are you asking from your soil could be too much.